Well, they're at it again in my state. We have now had, we broke the barrier. We saw articles a month or two ago about how Oklahoma will probably have a five or a six pointer earthquake sometime in the future. Well, the future has arrived because now we've had the, the biggest earthquake in the last five years. <clears throat> And we broke the 5.0 barrier. This is a 5.1. It's over near the Fairview area. Right over here where this cluster is. We'll blow it up. We can see the cluster a little better. And there it is right there. It is saying on this particular USGS data that it was 7.7 .7 miles deep. Earlier reports is that it was only one mile deep because it was more toward the surface. That was early this morning. I'm on a reduced work week, four days a week now, since the oil market has plunged over the last eight months. So we had a guy who comes in after I leave that had some prostate cancer, so I've had to work late. Unfortunate for his illness, but fortunate for me that I could pick up some hours we're lost. He's coming back Monday, so my plan was over the weekend to catch up on some rest. Well, I was asleep when this earthquake actually hit, and it woke me up. Now, generally, these 3.4s and lower, even even a four, you know, depending upon the location and how it's traveling through the fault lines and stuff. A lot of times I don't feel any trembling or vibrating. This one, I'm not sure if I actually felt it, but I woke up from it. And I know what, what I woke up to was noise. Now I've noticed in the last couple of these large ones, that I have felt. <clears throat> I think I think it probably did vibrate, but maybe I didn't notice it when I woke up because it combined with noise. But what I've noticed, and I'll describe this one first, was the sounds. This one sounded like wind. It sounded like, and it. It felt like big gusts of wind hitting the side of the house of my bedroom window, which would be the I'm on the west side, the east side of the house. And then there were other little noises mixed in with there. It sounded like raindrops, like the wind was blowing rain against the side of the the house and hitting the siding or the windows. Now this lasted I'm going to gauge it, it lasted 15 to 30 seconds because it seemed like it came in waves. The waves didn't seem like they got harder and harder and harder. It just seemed constant. And we had another one a month or two ago, something like that. 
and it was in the fours. Now that one was different than this one in the sense that um, I was sitting at my computer desk and I also had the television on. And I was doing something on the computer, but I, you know, I could still hear the news or whatever I had the television on. And the same thing happened almost, except that one, even though it was a lower magnitude. I think that was like a 4.4, 4.5 or something like that then. That one made a noise too that sounded like a big, nasty gust of wind smashing up against the east side of my house. Had I been on the west side, it might have sounded the same way on the west side, but I, I was in my room. <clears throat> and that had the same thing, where it sounded like it was blowing rain up against the siding in the window. Except that one, there was a rolling of the ground underneath the house and it felt like it felt like a gigantic snake was slithering underneath the house and and the floors and everything were rolling up as the back side of it crawled under the house. That's what it felt like. This is where it is located, right here. Just a ways from the Cimarron River. You can see the Winoka Municipal Airport here. There's the Fairview Municipal Airport right here. The little town of Helena here. You can also see the markings of these gas fields adjacent to it on either side and, and below it. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, I haven't checked in to see who's I'm gonna lay I'm gonna lay some money that it's probably fracking related. Duh anyway. There are several different outfits scattered throughout the areas of the whole state. I'm not going to say for sure, but I know that we have Chesapeake, Sandridge, Maverick. Uh, those are three that I can name right off the bat. I think Chaparral might be another one. But I'm going to say for sure if you take these coordinates, right here and you paste them in like Google Earth and go over there and then zoom in. I bet you you're going to find a fracking outfit in that near vicinity of that. And what we've read in our papers, probably, probably hit the main newspapers, is that some of these outfits to do this fracking have been trucking in disposal water from out of state so whether it's from their own locations from out of state or whether they're actually being paid by other outfits to dispose of other outfits water bring them across the state line into Oklahoma and then pump them into the disposal wells we don't know for sure how, how they're actually doing it but we do know for sure an article came out that that was happening there was disposal water coming from out of state 
for whoever's wells. And they were bringing it back here into Oklahoma and disposing of it. The oil industry is in shambles. The Saudis and their continued output. are regaining their dominance in the market simply because they're putting everybody out of business. They're putting, they're getting people laid off for, because of the plunge of the price. They can't afford to do business. They're losing money. They got humongous credit lines they took out when times were good. So they could buy all the you know, newer equipment, buy more different regions. They had oil on it so they could get in there and get it out of the ground. And now they're left holding the bag to pay the bank back on the credit lines. And I'm talking, well, even uh, even an outfit that's not a major gigantic company, like, say, Chesapeake or so, an example would be they'll take out hundreds of millions of dollars in credit line loans to do these things. It'd be like four or five hundred million dollars. And the larger ones, you know, they'll take up take them out into the billions. The point being when the price plunges and your stock price plunges and you're hemorrhaging money losses, you still got to pay back what you borrowed. And so they were told to lessen the amount of disposal water they were injecting into these wells. But I discussed it with a few friends of mine, and I hold that they're, they're not going to do it until you make them. You have to force them to do it. Because it's either make money or lose money. Lose money means going out of business, bankrupt. <clears throat> and then when you confine them in one area and lessen what they can inject back into the ground, I hold that they'll have another region that they're working, and they'll just... If they don't already have one drilled, they'll just drill another disposal well and set up over there. And they'll just take it over there and do the same thing. Until you get something magnitude-wise big enough to where they order that one to be lessened on what they can, it's going, what they can inject in it. It's just going to be a game of catch me if you can. This is not going to stop. It is going to continue. So why would we think that even an earthquake magnitude larger than 5.1 now will not be possible here in Oklahoma? Why would we think it's not possible when it just occurred? So I'm going to say these guys are going to end up causing a 6.0 or greater. Now all the reports are that I've seen so far, not really hearing any damage, but I know that if they got a 5.1, there's people around there somewhere that got damage to their houses. That, that, that's a given. That, that's not going to be arguable. They're not going to say that no houses suffered any damages, no driveways or anything like that. Somebody got something from that. So they're causing damages. They're not paying for them. And they're responsible for it. Somebody says, oh, you should have earthquake insurance. Well, you can get 
earthquake insurance. But you got to make sure you're getting the kind that has man caused earthquake coverage attached to it. And then I've heard some people got that, got that specific coverage and then went to use it. <clears throat> and um, I'd have to look more into the specifics of the policies and what you can get and how expensive it would be. But they said their deductible was like 10000 bucks, So it did them no good because they had damage, but it didn't come up to $10,000. It was thousands of dollars, but not 10000 so that came out of their pocket. So when the apostles asked the Lord Jesus, what are going to be the signs of your coming back? How are we going to know when you're coming back? And he tells them one of the things that he says are earthquakes in diverse places. He never did say the earthquake, you know, he didn't specifically define whether the earthquakes were going to be supernaturally caused by the will of, of the Lord. Or whether they would be man-caused. Now, obviously, there's regions of the world to where this kind of stuff is not going on, <clears throat> drilling-wise, that can't be related to drilling. <coughs> okay, so some of them are going to be supernaturally allowed earthquakes. Some of them are going to be caused by man. In that time of period when you're getting the signs of, of his return, all things are in play. What man was not allowed to do at one point, man will be gradually allowed to do on another point, and they all play together. So we are in that time. I mean, look, here we are. This little place called Oklahoma, unbelievably, fantastically, is now carrying the header, the banner, the title of the earthquake capital of the world? How ridiculously wrong can that possibly be? But it is. Think about it. There's going to be earthquakes in diverse places. Diverse, that means a lot of different places. And that means places that don't normally have them or shouldn't be getting them. Look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. There's fifteen right there. That's all on the thirteenth. That's all today. Like I said, they're not going to give it up. They're not going to stop it. <clears throat> Speaking of Sand Ridge Energy, their stock is 
basically worthless. They're going down the crapper. They've laid off a lot of people. I mean a lot. Well over 500. There was an article printed last week, I believe, where they said they didn't have any intentions of going bankrupt, filing for bankruptcy. I'm going to go against their grain of what they put out publicly in the press. And I'm going to say they're going to have no choice but to go bankrupt because the price of the oil, I believe it's going even lower. I believe all this is perfect, purposely done with an end goal. There's more than one way to skin a cat. There's more than one way to reach an end goal. Because at the end of the goal, there's more than one thing. They're doing it for more than one reason. You know, Obama doesn't like oil. He doesn't like coal. He's into this crap of carbon emission reduction. Save the planet. Let's go green. All this crap. Now, how much, how much, it's, if you don't just completely outlaw it and take it away and make it illegal to drill for oil and make gas and, and stuff from oil, if you don't make it illegal, then you're going to give it a nudge. You're going to make it hard to make a profit off of it. You're going to make it no reason that I should be in this business because it's not profitable. So you give them more reason to leave the business. and swing into the green that you want them to be in. See, that's one thing. Well, why would Saudi Arabia want to go green with all the oil that they got? Or Russia? Nobody said them guys would go green. It's all about USA being stepped on and squashed. Green is just a way, a means to an end, a way to destroy. And we are being destroyed right now. If people thought the Shemitah didn't occur, well, you're in it. Maybe it's over, but it's still going. How about that market, huh? Is it back up to the, what, 18.3 that it was? No. As this oil plummets, there's going to be more people lose their job. You're not hearing the Prez talk about it. And then Republicans and Democrats get up there and debate for your viewing pleasure. It's all an act. Are they talking about it? Are they really? They got more important things to do. And that's called lying to everyone. So we're headed for a six-pointer, folks. They broke the barrier. It's 5.1 now. So there's going to be a bigger one. Nobody's going to stop it because everybody is corrupt, one after the other, down the line.
They want the money. They have to have the money to operate. They can't make the money to operate unless they get the oil. They're going to do everything they can to try and be as cheap as they can, to be as profitable as they can. And those in the power positions that could could prevent things like this by making regulations of what they can and cannot do everywhere, not just play follow the leader, hopscotch over to the next spot that they start doing it on. Those people are obviously getting their palms greased to turn their head and look the other way. Until after this kind of stuff happens and then everybody starts screaming bloody murder. Do something, do something. And I'm talking about it goes from the highest level. You know, governor on all the way down. The governor says, well, we're going to give them this many million dollars so they can have a study on blah, blah, blah. Well, it don't take a first grader's intellect to be able to understand what's going on here and how to prevent it. You don't need to spend millions of dollars, taxpayer dollars, of which you say that you're almost a billion dollars less now because of the collapse of the oil industry. So you're going to spend some millions more, and they're going to take some more time so they can put all this stuff together and then turn it in, and then some stuffed shirts are going to read their findings. And you're going to end back in the same square that you was at. Because no matter what those findings come out on a piece of paper and read as, the oil people are going to say, prove in court that we did it. Or we will not stop doing it. Because they're going to say, it's not us. <clears throat> As you can tell, I'm a little upset about this. And we're, we're not even looking at... We haven't even seen the New Madrid yet. And it's overdue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're overdue on that one. Yeah, just over here in this area here, not too awful far away. You want to rock and roll? Let's see what that's like. Start planning on that one sometime in the future. And everybody's going to get a piece of that action. So that's my update on this earthquake that happened today here. Pay attention to everything. Things are moving real fast. A lot of slick talking liars out there on TV and in the media. They'll tell you anything. Much of it will have no truth to it. But God bless you and I'll speak to you soon.